There's a lot of people who are going along with the official narrative because they feel that they have no choice. And simply because someone does not like an alternative to something, say, for example, they want, doesn't mean there's no choice. Just saying. But the people who are going along with it, say, kicking and screaming, they still go along with it. And what happens in time, they come to accept that. They're now part of the official narrative. And they're looking at the people who are not saying, well, if I had to, so should you. And very easily, that's how you see even family members turning on each other. Hello, today is November 28, 2021, and the time is 1.21 p.m. In this video, I'm going to use several different examples to highlight the point of this video. And I suppose the point of this video would be um, self-destruction, the programming behind it. Now, I briefly mentioned in a previous video about the Manchurian candidate. And what that is, real, real brief, is a specific programming, usually through stress, torture, or something, that will cause someone to commit a specific set of deeds or acts upon, for example, a trigger of a word, of a phrase, or even an event. And there's nothing that can stop that programming. Once it's turned on, it's turned on. When it turns off, Sometimes that people have a recollection and sometimes they don't. It's very interesting. And the people who are talking, and there's other similar uh, experiments or whatever programs related to that. And decades ago, when people were talking about that, they were deemed conspiracy theories, not jobs, the whole nine yards. And over the decades, through official sources, government and everything, they're admitting that this is real. So we know that this is very real. Now, we can apply that on a mass scale, say, for example, with worldwide events. We have one side who are completely accepting the official narratives and whatever remedies that may be offered. And the other side are looking at them, who are not going along with the official narratives, as looking at them as being self-destructive. Now, on the flip side, the people who are accepting the official narratives are looking at the people who are not as them being self-destructive. Now, the difference being is that people who are not following along with the official narrative are not scared of any th alleged threats by current worldwide, worldwide events. While the people who are going along with the official narrative are very much afraid. So... If we back up a little bit and we can break this down, we see this with groups. For example, with uh, social justice movements and everything else. Everyone within each group and between each groups are programmed to be self-destructive. And we can further break that down into individuals. We see how individuals, for example, who become um, drug addicts, self-harm or whatever, we look at their life as being self-destructive. And if we use the example of, say, Brooks, the person who's been arrested and charged with the um, driving the SUV through the Christmas parade, we look at his history that's been told to us, his criminal history, as being self-destructive. Now, I'm not even remotely implying or challenging that the event didn't happen. Okay, I want to make that very clear. But I mentioned there's some anomalies with regards to that whole event, specifically him. And if we take, for example, um, he went to the door of, the, uh, of a homeowner through the doorbell cam. He rang the door, asked for an Uber and everything else. And then within a minute or so, the police show up and arrest him. So... What happened there? Because the homeowner is now saying 
that, oh, he invited him in, made him a sandwich, gave him a jacket, talking about downtown. Apparently, Brooks was saying he had no idea of what happened downtown. Whether he did or didn't, we don't know. There's not enough information to make a properly informed conclusion at this time, but whatever. So, uh, things like that are like, what's going on? Now, what really got my attention to all this, got me thinking, was he really the driver? Could have been somebody else? We don't know. Now, in my previous video, I said people actually started to go fund me for this guy. Surprised. Okay. And people were donating to that. He's pleading not guilty. And then when you actually go through the GoFundMe post campaign, and I was watching a video from a YouTuber who read parts of it, and that got me thinking, well, why would anyone start to go fund me for this person? Now, I've talked extensively about uh, people being wrongfully convicted. We have Daniel Holtzclaw. Daniel in the Den is his um, documentary on this. Stephen Avery, his documentary is The Making of a Murderer. Stephen Avery was not just convict, wrongfully convicted once, but twice. Everyone was convinced at the time that he or both of these people committed the crimes, despite the evidence to the contrary. And even my case, now there was no witnesses. However, I don't know what, who was behind the scenes or what kind of profiling they were doing, but they were building me up to be whatever it is that they wanted me to be. And a lot of people involved with the case just went along with it programming okay and my documentary is on hold for the time being so stay tuned for that anyway wrongful convictions i've talked about the studies made famous by julia shaw implanting false memories specifically relating to um, people being convinced that they committed a crime they never committed this was her study and within a week she convinced her group of people individually that they committed this crime. And all she needed was a couple little historical facts on them. And by the time she was done, these people were making up the story themselves, feeling bad, sad, upset with themselves, and even in distress. And that's when the, her experiment had to be called off. So now we see the challenge of even with witness testimony. So if there were witnesses that seen, for example, Brooks, can they be relied on? Because now Brooks' face and name and everything has been plastered to it, and everyone's convinced that he was the driver. So now we look at, for example, videos and photos. But, for example, with this technology called deep fake, can that even be trusted? Again, I'm not challenging if the event of the Christmas parade happened. I'm not questioning that at all. But who was the driver? So we see a pattern with society programmed to target someone to destroy them, self-destruction. We see this with individuals in their lives, we see this with the groups, and we see this with worldwide current events programmed to self-destruct. And this all ties in with what is called the Manchurian Candidate and related programs to that. Just things to think about. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Now, I'm just highlighting this for whatever it's worth. It comes along with programming. Programming the masses to, for example, say that he is the one, or programming that he did do it, but he was programmed to do it. Because when you watch him in the courtroom, when he was at the bail hearing, he was very upset. He was in shock of what he was going through. Now, if somebody, when somebody commits a crime, they tend not to act the way he did.